Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. That's because my son. There we go. Sorry, my, my apologies. Technical difficulties again. I was trying to turn the volume down. Where is it? Where did it go? Okay, and then I'll just turn it down from there. Okay. Good morning. Sorry about the wait for that. Good morning, teachers, students, family, friends, and judges. Thank you all for coming out today. My name is Olivia Grubbs, and I'm super excited to share with you all my experience with my governor's school project, looking more into ministry in the modern world. Going into this project, I wasn't quite sure what path I wanted to take in life, but I do remember I had my mind set on just looking towards a career that how much money could I get out of it. But this changed towards the end of my junior year, which is why I chose this as my quote of quality, which says, each life is made up of mistakes and learning, waiting and growing, practicing patience and being persistent. I feel like this quote not only embodies what I went through on my project, but also what each of us may go through on a daily basis. What happened was, towards the end of my junior year, I was invited to volunteer at a local church's sports camp at the very beginning of the summer. I was a little nervous at first because I didn't know very many of the people that went here, and so I was really timid, but I ended up saying yes, and this week completely changed my outlook on my project. I was introduced to so many influence influencers and so many friendly leaders in the community, and specifically within this ministry, and I loved watching the children grow throughout the week. So I decided that I would talk with the pastor of this church. This church was New Life Church of Central Virginia, and they're now known as Journey Church. So if I go back and forth, I'm still getting used to the name change too. And he introduced me to Mrs. Angela Raytig. Mrs. Raytig has been a part of this church for around 10 years. For the past three, she's been an active member. And for two, she's held the position of being the head of the Kids Life Program. This means that she's been in charge of all the activities, creating them and carrying them out with the age groups ranging from nursery all the way up to middle school. She's also in charge of scheduling volunteers, meeting one-on-one -on -one with volunteers, and creating community outreach events within this portion of the church. 
So I sat down with Mrs. Raytig to discuss what I wanted to accomplish through this. And I basically told her that growing up my whole life, I had been attending a traditional church. I hadn't really been subject to any contemporary or modern church. So I asked her, I wanted to see what happens behind the scenes that you don't necessarily see when you're in the seats or in the pews of a church. So alongside Mrs. Raytig, I was able to help her carry out two community service events. One was a backpack and school supplies drive, and the other was a clothing drive. For both of these events, I was in charge of standing outside of the kids' life area. I had to introduce myself to people, give them details on what this project involves, let them know what they could do to help, and encourage them to get more involved. I also had to make office calls and office emails a few days later to thank the people that were involved. And I'd never done this before, but then after three, I considered myself a professional. And also, my favorite part of this internship was working with the children one-on-one. -on -one. I sat down with Mrs. Raytig and I helped her create some activities, and then I actually got to lead some of the groups. One of them was the kindergarten through second grade group. With this, I not only saw myself grow throughout the three weeks that I was helping, but I also got to see the children grow alongside me. So we all know that children, once you first meet them, they'll be a little shy, but after a while, they'll be crazy and they'll be themselves and their unique personalities will come out. And that was my favorite part and I loved seeing that. And I realized that this profession is very similar to a teaching profession, but in my opinion, it's a little bit better because you get to establish that relationship with the children that you don't necessarily get to have in a public school system. One of the weeks that I was helping, I ran into an old coach of mine, Mr. Jeff Austin. He talked to me about my project and said if I ever needed any help, he would be there for me. And a few weeks later, I realized I did need a little help, so I asked him if he would be willing to be my community service mentor, and of course he said yes. Mr. Jeff Austin has been working with the FCA Ministries for around 10 years, and last year he accepted the position of being a full-time FCA leader. This means that not only is he mentoring the students, the teachers, and the coaches here at Louisa County, but also around four surrounding counties. So he's coming in contact with 100 plus students, athletes, coaches in, in a year and even sometimes a month and even sometimes weeks and days. He was able to overlook two portions of my community service. One was a t-shirt fundraiser and the other was a testimony outreach video. My initial goal was to raise $1,500 to go towards the church that I interned with and towards an FCA scholarship fund. To do this, I realized I really did need to reach out to the community and get more people involved, and that's why I chose to do the testimony outreach video. For all of this, I had to really be independent with my project. I had to take a lead role. I realized the importance of scheduling my time, managing my time, getting all the materials together. I had to talk with some of the assistant principals to be sure that I could use the auditorium for two days of war block. I also had to talk with the publications to be sure I could borrow cameras and lighting I needed to use for this video. And also going into this, I really hardly knew how to use a camera, so I needed a lot of help with that. So I contacted one of my friends, Mackenzie Hall, and she was so much help. And she helped me learn the technicalities of videography and what comes with using a camera, using lighting in a certain way, and how to make edits and all of the technicalities that comes with that. And she was actually able to help me create the video that you saw at the very beginning of this presentation. This video came out around the beginning of November. It initially, the first day, it got around 400 views. Two days later, it got around 600 views. There was over 50 shares between Facebook and Instagram. And the last time I checked, which was yesterday, there was around 800 views. All of this helped me to reach my goal. I was able to raise $1,000 to put towards the church that I interned with, and they are able to put that aside for the building of a new church, which is known as their launch campaign. And I was able to raise $500 to go towards an FCA ministry fund. The, uh, also throughout the year, I was in charge of the Instagram social media account for the FCA here at this school, and this actually helped me form the basis of my research question which was specifically, how does technology benefit and impact churches? And what this looks like in the attendance, the communication. And so first, I wanted to look into statistics. I found one study completed in 2007 showed that 80.2% of churches used the technology simply as a mean to broadly state who they were as a church. 90% used it to state the services they provided. And another 80% used it to show the programs that they provided within their church. I then wanted to look into how specifically the leaders of the church interacted with the members of the church. So I found another study completed four years later that showed 90% use email and 34% use social media. I assume this number has skyrocketed in with the recent years because of the increasing use of technology on multiple platforms throughout the world. 
I also wanted to look into a specific website that I could generate information from. I found one known as Web Church. It was founded in 2005. Initially, obviously, they had no daily viewings. About a year later, they had around 300 daily viewings. And then a few years later, they updated it to become a virtual reality church. And this encompassed around 8,000 views per day. Then I wanted to look into a more modern approach to how the technology has been a platform for different religious organizations. And I found one being blog posts. One that was founded in 2015 is known as Patheos. It still exists today and it encompasses around 500 different blog posts and around 30 million views per month. All of my research led me to conclude that yes, technology has had a huge impact on religious organizations. It has allowed members and leaders to a better way to communicate. It has allowed leaders to reach out to the community more and let people know who they are and what their mission is. And it has allowed different organizations and leaders within the religious organizations to communicate and have a platform to share religious ideas. Each portion of my project helped me to realize more who I was and helped me to understand more about the educational and professional world, as well as just who I was as an individual. Specifically with my community service, the biggest thing I got from this was how to communicate properly, how to interact with people. And, um, <clears throat> and I also learned that it is important in this profession to really be a people person, to be able to step out of your comfort zone and to always be on top of things, be on time. And from an individual perspective, I grew so much confidence over the year. And the biggest thing that I learned with this profession is as long as you have a love and a passion for the mission and the meaning behind ministry, and as long as you have a love for people, and as long as you have a love for giving back, you can really go anywhere with this type of profession. Next year, I plan to attend PVCC and finish up my associate's degree after one year, hopefully. And then I will be following God's plan because I'm not quite sure what I want to major in yet, but I know along the way I'll be continuing to and be involved in religious organizations and clubs. <clears throat> Thank you to my parents for always leading me down the right path, for always being there for me and being my biggest support system. My friends for always being there for me as well. And, helping out big time with this project, my mentors for paving the way for me, for leading me to this, find this conclusion of what I love about this profession. And to Governor School Class of 2020, you guys are all awesome. I love all the memories that we've made and I won't forget you guys and I know you guys are gonna go great places in the future. Miss King, thank you for always answering my never ending questions for this project. Judges, thank you for coming out today. Now I will be opening the floor to any questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, I did find there was a few um, different case studies that said that if they got if it got too far for technology to be involved in religious organizations, that it'd be taken away from the personal interaction between people. But overall, they, most of them pointed out that it can benefit if you use it the right way. But if it does take over too much and if it does become something that people just use the online, there is a possibility that it will interfere with that that's really essential to the church and the mission of church. Yes, ma'am. Some of them did show, I don't remember the statistics off the top of my head, I apologize. But yes, some of them did show that it did help increase people coming because many of them used this as a way to show like community outreach events. And so these people were able to come to the community outreach events. And then some of them ended up like realizing that this was like me. Like I realized actually doing my internship, I now attend this church regularly and I volunteer this to this church regularly. And I think that's one thing that it pointed out. I don't remember the statistics. I'm sorry about that. Anyone else? Yes, sir. The most difficult thing that made me uncomfortable, um, I feel like at initially, having to stand outside of the kids life area and introduce myself to people. I didn't know anybody who went to this church at the very beginning. So I was really nervous and I didn't know, I really didn't think I was 
adequate or old enough, I thought people would look down on me, but it ended up being completely fine and everybody was so encouraging and influencing. But the most difficult part that wasn't as uncomfortable was fitting this presentation into 10 minutes because I could talk on and on about this all day. Any other questions? Thank you. Don't be afraid to be sh like come out of your comfort zone. Don't be shy to do something that you're not sure about. Like over the past year, I feel like I've grown so much and gotten so much confidence in this profession that I wasn't sure about at first. Also, just make sure that you're staying on top of everything. Start things early. Always be ready and um, yeah, just keep stay organized. Definitely too. Thank you.